Right, so I spent last night purifying a ton of clay, um, grinding it up, and then winnowing out all the good clay. Um, so I've got a pretty good chunk here, and I've got some more powder to uh, make into something else. But for now, I want a really good bowl, because I want to boil my water in a bowl and not have to just, you know, make a clay boil or a rock boil all the time. When I'm working primitive clay in a spot where I really need to fast dry it, I just you know, work this thing, knead it and knead it and knead it, um, and try to get all those platelets to line up nicely so that they're almost brick layered in there. A lot of people do pinch pots and um, coil pottery and it definitely works. This is the fastest way to make a pot. So in a situation like this, this is definitely the way to go. What I'm gonna do is make a disc. Just kind of pound my fist into it a little bit. And then what I've done is filled my shirt with sand. So I made a big ball and I'm just gonna shape this thing around the ball of sand. As it gets bigger, I can just add more sand to my shirt. And uh, you know, it almost is so nice and easy that it feels like cheating, but you know, it totally works. You could do it with a wet rock on the inside if you didn't have an extra shirt. All right, so you can see what I'm doing. I've got a paddle here, which I wrapped with rope. And the reason I did that is if I'm just using the wood paddle, it tends to stick to the clay and suction on there. So I wove up some agave fiber cord and I'm pounding um, this here and now it doesn't stick. It also leaves a cool pattern in it, which uh, I tend to like. Looks nice and primitive. But look how quickly this is coming together. Now don't think you have to just lightly tap this. You want this clay moving, you wanna pop all the air bubbles that are in it and you wanna get it thin. So what I'm doing is working all this thickness of clay away from the base and down towards the rim. And then as I want to expand it, I'll add more sand to my shirt and it's ready to go. But you really want this clay moving around. It's got the support of the inner sandbag, so it's not gonna break or fold. So this is definitely, in my opinion, this is the fastest and easiest and best way to make pottery um, in a primitive situation. You can see how quickly this all comes together. I mean, I pretty much, it's a little too thick still and I'd like to go bigger, but you can see this is almost already a usable bowl if it were to dry properly and fire properly. All right, so I'm gonna take a break for a second, fill my shirt with more sand, but you can see what I've got is a very thick bowl. And now we're just gonna expand it out and make the walls thinner and make this pot bigger. <clears throat> All right, so I let this thing sit for a little while, dry out, it's much firmer now. Um, and so I've expanded it a little bit, but basically what I'm doing is just, again, just putting the sandbag on the inside, just pulling the sides down. I want this thing to be, whoop, be a little bigger, um, just for boiling a lot of water at once. It would be nice, oh, I've got to spring a leak with the sand. Um, so I'm just pulling the rim down and in, um, making it as nicely round as possible. As I dry this, I'll just keep touching it up every time lighter hits, you know, as I, as it dries, cause I don't want to really make it crack or anything. Um, but you can see this is getting bigger and bigger. My rim's a little uneven. There's some spots I don't like. So the last thing I'm going to show you, um, if the rim's uneven, what you do is just take a piece of string. I've got some yucca fiber sitting on the ground here. Kind of put it at the level that you want and just pull it through nicely. I'm pretty confident after how much this thing dried and like, two hours that, you know, by tomorrow, this thing's going to be dry. So I'm just going to throw it in the fire, cross my fingers and hope for the best. As it sits and dries, I'm going to just keep working it, make sure it's nice and um, symmetrical and, you know, just make it look good. Uh, polish the inside just by rubbing my thumb and then a smooth rock on the inside. So I get as much of a shine out of it as I can. And that should do it for this. And if this works out and doesn't crack, it's gonna be a huge lifesaver and save me a ton of time. All right, what I'm doing right now is processing yucca fiber to make rope. Yucca is an amazing desert plant. It's everywhere and it's got a ton of really, really strong natural fibers trapped inside this pulpy material. Now, most people recommend that you pound the yucca to separate all the fibers and make a perfect looking cord. Um, in a survival situation, you're trying to save time. You don't care what the cord looks like. So what I recommend is just split the leaf down the middle and then just keep splitting it into smaller and smaller sections. This will give you some really strong fibers and it takes a fraction of the time as pounding. 
So just keep separating this into little pieces. Once you have a ton of fiber, this is about the past hour's worth of separating yucca leaves. So it's fairly easy to do. Um, you should always be just making cord. If you're doing nothing else, sit around and make rope. From there, I can weave that all together. All right, so in case you don't know, to make rope, what you wanna do is separate your fibers into two separate bundles. Now you're gonna pinch them together at the top in your non-dominant hand. Now you're gonna take one individual side and you're gonna spin it counterclockwise. And you're gonna do it until it builds up tension and doesn't wanna turn anymore. Now you're gonna wrap it around the other one, spiral it around the other one in a clockwise circle. They've switched places, so you take the other one and spin it counterclockwise again, spiral it around the other one in a clockwise circle. Okay, the individual is counterclockwise, spiral around the other one clockwise. So if you do this enough, it builds up tension and, and those fibers then lock themselves together. And within you know, a matter of an hour, you could weave 10, 20 feet of cord, no problem. All right, another great plant to know is this one here. This is wolfberry. This plant has millions of little orange berries on it. They're really, really tasty. You can dry them out and make like a raisin. Kind of tastes like goji berries. Um, or you can just eat them as is and keep, your, keep the water in them because that's always good for you. Definitely no wolfberry. Every day I'm going to come out and load up on these. They're everywhere. Um, and I just get handfuls of them. So no wolfberry for sure. Once I had time, I decided to shape a canteen for carrying water. For this, I used a combination of pinch, paddle, and coiling techniques. The quick test bowl that I fired in the beginning had a crack in it, but it showed the clay's potential to be great when purified. Here it acts as support to the base of my canteen. Once I pinched and paddled out the base, I added rolled coils to the top in order to make the vessel taller but not wider. The concept here is to add coils, smear the clay together, and then paddle it into shape. At this point, I kind of want to start bringing it in. Um, it doesn't need to be too big. So if I start bringing it in now, it should taper in until about here, and then maybe I'll make a rim. Um, we'll see. So this coil is just going to be a little smaller than the rim of the, in the pot right now. Give it a little tap just to give it some texture and to pound it into the other clay. the Manix coil. Now I'm just going to smooth my coils down again on the inside and outside. Really blend them in. Make sure these coils blend in with the rest of the pot, especially since it was a little drier. Alright, so um, it brought it in. Now I'm just kind of making the lip come out. And I'm thinking maybe I could stick like um, a stalk of a century plant in the top to kind of cork it, just a little bit of a cork. But what I'm going to do is just work this in, kind of pounded the rest into shape with the paddle. Um, and slowly as it dries, I'm going to come up and just touch it up anywhere. I feel like it's um, the shape needs to be improved. I find that if I paddle it in the first half of its drying stage where it's still pretty malleable, it really does help if it starts to crack, even these little hairline cracks, it sticks them all back together. So I do still like to move the clay around um, when I'm fast drying things. Other times what I'll do is just make sure that I'll kind of bury it in the ground in an area where the soil is kind of damp. So um, if I had more time, I'd take it to where I'm getting my water. Um, but man, I'm pumped on this thing. I really hope it works. I'm trying not to fall in love because it totally might break my heart. But um, if this works out and I can carry water around with me, it's gonna be um, an incredible thing to have out here. Being able to carry water and not just have to go to the source every time you wanna drink 
is just unbelievable. So, um, you know, I'll gussy this thing up as it dries. But for now, that'll be that. All right, once everything gets going, I've got this all smoothed out. I'm gonna take two globs of clay and put two little handles on the side, poke some holes through them so that I can actually carry it around my shoulder or in a tump line around my head. So um, yeah, there's it. there it is. I'll keep shaping it as it goes and um, just slow dry it. And hopefully in a day or two, I'm gonna be able to fire this thing. Things are drying out good with the bowl that I made. I'm just gonna throw them in together. I just don't have time. If I waited till the last day to fire this, I wouldn't really, it wouldn't be as useful for me. So I'm just gonna throw it in the fire, cross my fingers. Um, but for now, it's gonna go into the back side of this overhang and just slow dry as much as possible. Um, the desert just pulls water out of a pottery really quickly, which can make it crack. So fingers crossed if it goes well, because I'd love to take this thing home with me. All right, one of the plants I'm using is a, just a trail side nibble is the Ocotillo. Um, real spiky stalks coming out of the ground. And they have these orange flowers um, that you can just eat as you walk by. Um, they taste great as long as you don't take like handfuls of them, throw them in your mouth. They kind of have a soapy taste if you eat too many at once. Um, but the great thing about these, they make an even better tea. So what I can do is take these, dry them out, throw them in some boiling water back at my camp, and have a really nutritious tea. All right, so it's pottery firing time. What I'm doing right now is building up the fire, keeping the pots pretty far away from it and just letting them get some of the warmth from the fire. I need to make sure all the moisture's out of this before they go anywhere too close to the fire. So I'm just preheating them basically. From there, I'll move them closer and closer, turning them as I can get closer. And then I'm gonna start moving the coals in towards the pots, eventually surrounding the pots with the coals and then going entirely over top. Once they're actually in the bed of coals, I'll throw a bunch of small sticks on there and flash fire them up to a thousand degrees. From there, they get glowing red hot. And then I'm gonna let them slowly cool. Just let the fire die down. Let them sit in the ashes until morning, until I can pick them up with my hands. I never wanna pull them out of the fire too early. But for now, I'm just gonna let them preheat in the back of this cave. All right, it's morning. It's definitely a pretty cold morning, but um, I've been slowly pulling back all the ashes. I sat up next to this fire um, for a good portion of the night and uh, everything looked like it re went really well. So I just don't want to screw it up by, by uh, cooling them down too quickly. Um, but yeah, I'm pulling back the ashes a little bit. They're not quite ready to just pull out of the fire. They're, they're warm. Um, oh, I shouldn't even do that. Um, they're warm to the touch. This guy's not too bad. Um, so yeah, uh, this looks amazing. A little chip by the rim there, but I'm um, at least not seeing any light through it. Um, that's a good sign. And no real micro cracks or anything. So this looks good. I'm so excited about this canteen. I think it's going to be incredibly helpful out here. Um, and uh, the bowl looks great too. It's a little hotter. Yeah, I'm gonna leave that one in there. Um, but yeah, everything looks really good. I'm so excited to test it out and make sure it holds water and that everything works. And um, the canteen especially, being able to use that is gonna be a huge help. Um, so definitely worth the time invested, especially if I was gonna be here longer than a week, having these two things would be absolutely worth the time invested. Um, one of the bowls didn't make it. Um, so this one here, I ended up pulling out, but this popped in the middle of the night and I could kind of hear it. 
but you can see it kind of popped right in the middle and it can tell I can tell it's just a sign there was too much water in there there was just a layer of water and this one got the least amount of drying time so um, that makes sense but um yeah I'm so excited everything worked out good and um, I'll get back to these when I start using them so really excited about that give it another hour and I'll yank them out of there all right, things are going well with trapping. I want to try something new out that I've uh, never tried before. Came up with this idea of combining a split stick deadfall and using water as bait. Water is one of the most universal baits out there. Everything wants it. And in an area like this, it's super dry. Animals can smell it out and it draws them in. So um, I've come up with this idea of how to use bait or use water as a bait. And, um, you know, there's something I've learned in trapping. It's called a split stick deadfall. So these are basically just two sticks here, both perfectly flat, that they match up in the middle. And so when you push these together, they actually stay together really well. But the second something interferes with that, they break in half and the whole trap comes down. So what I'm thinking about doing is I've got this thin little piece of pottery that'll break away fairly easily. And I'm going to fill it with water so that this is the bait. Prop up my deadfall against it and then when the animal comes in and touches the side of this little bowl, it's going to rock over, set off the split stick deadfall, and the whole trap's going to come down. If it hits this, it's fine. It's so thin at the base, it'll just break away and give almost no resistance. Now, I can imagine this is going to take a really long time to set up, so I'll probably cut out and cut back in in a minute. Uh, let's give it a try first. I learned that if you prop up the base of this one, the pressure's coming down a little bit more instead of sideways, which just forces this thing apart. So with a split stick deadfall, you definitely want to have the, the weight coming down as much as you can. Now this is going to be tricky, but that's the way I want it. I want this to be a hair trigger. Stable so this wind doesn't get it. But still, I can't believe it. That's set up really quick. I'm going to throw some bait in there and some berries as well. But for now, what I'm going to do, hopefully not setting it off, is to fill my little pottery piece there with water. And so that water will hang out in there. And when something comes and, <laughs> do I dare? When something comes and touches this, this bowl, like so, it's going to set off the trap. All right, here's a behind the scenes shot to show you why this trap never worked. Right away, my trail camera picks me up, trying to get a close up of the trap. The wind sets it and crushes my bowl. I did however set other traps. All right, check my trap. It's sprung. Oh yeah, I got one. It sprung. There's a little rat tail coming out here. There we go. Poor little guy. Starting to feel bad. Uh, so yeah, he came in. Hopefully the trail camera picked this up. Um, uh, maybe. Yeah, it's flashing at me. Hopefully it got it. Um, yeah, a little guy came in, his back feet were still here, and he just touched the bait stick. This was set much more sensitive than uh, before, so um, it was a quick, quick touch, and I got him. So, um, looks like a, a, a headshot, just really clean, um, which is awesome. So, cool. Another, uh, another source of protein to eat, and uh, pretty happy about that. Really good meal. I figured I'd film this one. Um, I've got my pottery and I'm so excited. It purifies my water just really quickly, um, which I can now bring back to camp. And I put it over the coals, just on three rocks. You don't want to just throw it right back on top of a, a flamey fire. Just put it in coals. It's not even actually touching the coals much. And this way I can just control the heat and just, you know, protect that pottery, treat it really well because this thing is a, a godsend out here for me and I don't want to do anything that could potentially break it. Should be fine regardless, but I'm just being real careful. I've got my rat in there mixed in with some choya buds. Got tons of uh, cactus fruit. I could just eat that the entire time I'm here and be fine. But my favorite by far is the wolfberry, which I'm just mowing down in handfuls. So doing really good on food. Uh, I'm just going to keep adding coals. You can see that this water is starting to steam and starting to boil pretty good. I'm just going to let it do that for about 10 minutes, and then I know the meat's going to be really well cooked. 
So got an awesome wilderness stew, doing really good. And uh, looking forward to working on some other projects. Yum, wilderness stew. Choya buds and rat cooking up in a nice fire. All right, so uh, getting towards the end of the trip and uh, I haven't filmed in a little while. My batteries are starting to run low, so I gotta conserve. Um, but you know, I'm definitely feeling it. I'm getting a good amount of food. Those fruits and everything else are really working out. Um, the one thing that's killing me right now is the amount of thorns out here. There's cactuses everywhere. Walking up the dry creek beds does help and skipping around rocks helps keep uh, my feet clean. But when I walk out of here, I want some sort of sandals, something I can wear. Um, so what I'm gonna do is weave together yucca fiber sandals. And to do that, you need a six foot long piece of cord. So I just wove this yucca fiber cord, tied it at the top. And then what I'm gonna do is holding the top, I'm gonna cross the midpoint and bring it up and match. So right now I've got two loops. So what I'm gonna do now is I've got a bunch of yucca fiber and I've kind of rolled it over on itself. So it just makes a very primitive type of, I don't know if you call it a rope, um, but just rolled up like that. I'm gonna stick it under the first one all the way to the left here. Let's say I've got four, one, two, three, four. And I'm just gonna spin all these fibers together. I'm not making cordage um, for these pieces, only the main uh, base piece here. So I twist that and it goes under this one. So it's gonna go over that one. pull through and I pull it tight against my toes. So now I've reached the end. It went under, over, under, over. So now it went over this last one. So I'm going to twist it tight and bring it back under this time. Oh, it definitely hurts my toes. Okay. Bring it back under and pull it through. Now I can just add more fiber as I go. And each time I just keep spinning. The tighter you spin this stuff, the stronger of a base it's gonna make and you know the less snags it's gonna have, probably gonna keep more thorns out. So I'm just gonna keep twisting this, add fibers when I feel like I need to thicken it up. Okay, and anytime I need to add fibers, I just lay them over and twist them in. Just mesh them up in there. And now I'm just gonna twist, always in the same direction. And so it went under this one, so now it's gonna go over, under, over. I just keep working my way back and forth like that. It's real quick and easy. And this makes a super primitive sandal, but it works fantastic. Okay, so you can see the base of that starting to come together. I'll cut back in a minute after I've finished a little bit, but you can see I'm just pulling through each time. It's just really going under, over, under, over, turn it around, do the next time. It's real simple, yet yeah, makes a great sandal. It's real important to get your fingers in there and pull that tight. Pull that right against there. Just keep spinning. Make sure this, this part here is really tight. Twist that as much as it wants to go. Bring it under. Over the next one. Under the next one. Just keep spinning as you go. And you hit the end, pull it tight. You can see how I'm getting a little bit of a flat weave right in there. I've now switched to uh, separate feet here so that I can pull these apart and that'll help make it wider as I weave so it doesn't all just pull together really thinly like at the heel. Um, and again, I'm still just going over under Wrap it real tight on this number four here on my right. Bring it under. Pull it out. Keep twisting. So it went under that one, so it's over this one. Under the next. And over the last. At this point, it's time to add more fiber. And that's real simple. You just Stick it over there, mix it in. All right, I'm getting to the end of this. 
And, uh, you know, it's not the prettiest thing in the world, but it's going to work. And I'm stoked to uh, have some foot protection at this point. It's going to help me move a lot faster. Um, you know, while I've been out here, of course, I'm going slow, looking out for rattlesnakes and things. So maybe it's good that I was barefoot because it does slow you down a lot. Um, getting out of here, walking out in the, the creek bed with these on now, I feel like I'm going to be pretty good and it's just really going to save me and, uh, you know, help with that walkout. So, um, I'm just finishing up here. You can see the ropes around my toes. It's about as long as it's going to get. I'm going to try to get, you know, a little bit more out of it because it's just about the size of my foot right now. And I just like it to be slightly bigger. So I'm just going to keep going. Um, but once I'm at the end, I just kind of tuck it in and you can try to tie it in or whatever. And then whatever's left over these two loops, I can kind of use to help tie this thing to my foot. Um, and from here, I'm just going to make another rope that I can weave in and out so I can weave it over my foot, pull the drawstring tight, and just make sure it's super snug. Um, so I'll show you that once I'm done with all that. But for now, this is pretty much done. Um, here I can show you. It fits my foot pretty good. And then I'll try to maybe even pull these up in case I end up kicking a cactus with the front of my toe. Um, I'll have a little protection there, but you know, once I clean it all up with a knife and get rid of all those strays, all I need to do is make one more and I got a pair of shoes. So pretty happy with that. Maybe not the most necessary thing on the first day of survival, but after a while, it's going to be a godsend. A lot of time put in, but being able to walk out of here without getting cactus thorns on me is just amazing. So there we go. Got my sandals. All right, it's my final day and it's time to walk out of here. Without these yucca fiber sandals, that would be a much more arduous task, but it's gonna be great wearing these. I've got my canteen full of water, so I won't get dehydrated on the walkout, and my basket full of all the other keepsakes I wanna bring home with me. Um, I hope you liked this video as much as I liked making it and being out here. Um, please subscribe to this page, check out my website at wildsurvivalskills.com, and then come take a class. I run classes all over the world in survival and primitive skills. Thanks for watching.